Okay, we're back live here in uh, Silicon Valley in the heart of big data in Santa Clara, California. This is Silicon Angle's uh, exclusive coverage of Riley Media Strata Conference. Day two of three day broadcast wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, wikibon.org. This is theCUBE. And uh, we are here with uh, Quantcast. Jim uh, Kelly, who's the VP of R&D at Quantcast. Jim, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. So you got here. a little interesting angle on, on all this. Quantcast obviously collects a lot of data. You guys are big data practitioners. Uh, for those who don't know, Quantcast is a service that- We use. You know, we use, we yeah, we're, we're quantified. Yeah, Excellent. Check it out. Glad to hear that. SiliconANGLE Network. We think your numbers are a little low on us, actually. You know, we get that a lot. That. <laughs> <laughs> we prefer Google Analytics. We like <laughs> we, use, we actually kidding. think Alexa is a better. Uh, Google algorithm. Analytics numbers are actually I think higher. Alexa toolbar market. We got to figure that out. Doing too well. so maybe we could talk offline and help us out. <laughs> but, uh, but it's all good. So, uh, we're one of the you know few sites in our business that quantify it. We're proud to, and mm -hmm. uh, really appreciate that service. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but you guys have some interesting things going on. Um, you're obviously big data practitioners, and why don't you tell us sort of your angle on things, and then we'll get into the, uh, the Quantcast file system. We are indeed big data practitioners. We were, we've been doing big data since 2006. We were big data before big data was cool. <laughs> and uh, we ended up innovating a lot of our own technologies uh, to handle the volumes we were getting. And one of them was our file system, the Quantcast file system, which we built to deliver better cost efficiency, especially at large scale. And, and we've developed it over five or six years internally. We run our business on it. And in September, we released it to open source so that other organizations could use it as well. Right, right. Okay, so tell us, why does the world need uh, an alternative to HDFS? What's the, the problems there that you're trying to address that you obviously addressed internally? Well, the, the biggest problem we were trying to address is just how much it costs to process big data. Hardware costs a lot. And when you're doing big data, big data sets tend to grow, and the costs tend to grow as well. And it's not just it's not just disk drives; it's servers and it's racks and it's operating costs around power and cooling and real estate for renting space in in co-location facilities. And it's and it's operating staff to keep it all going, and it it costs a lot. So it, once you're operating at scale, you're going to be paying five, six, seven figures per month on your computing power. And so what we built was a more efficient file system that makes better use of space and that effectively doubles the storage capacity of a Hadoop cluster versus stock HDFS. So um, I, I look at this as almost like a little mini AWS, right? You have all this cool tech internally and you say, hey, we can make a business out of this. So let's, you know. Well, pointed externally and help the community out. And, yeah, and we're not trying to make a business out of it. We're, you know, Quantcast is in the audience measurement and advertising business, and we don't, we don't sell file systems, we don't sell support around file systems, but this has added a lot of value to us, and we've used so much open source software internally and, and benefited from, so, from it so much, it's really good to be able to give back. So, so the value that you get out of doing this is you get more, more contributors, more people actually you know, innovating around the, uh, the environment, right? Because you can't do it all yourself. Is that yeah, it, well it, it means a lot to developers. You know, if you're a developer, it's, it's a good thing to be contributing to an open source project because it, it gives you a chance to make a bigger impact. And so it's popular with our team. And, and for the company, you know, file systems especially are really critical pieces of infrastructure that benefit from the scrutiny that the open source model provides. So, so we get some benefit that way as well. So what are, you, are your objectives specifically and how will you measure the success of, of this initiative? Well, success for us is getting some high quality collaborators and um, extending, the, extending the product together. Okay, so, um, when you say getting some, I mean we're talking dozens, you want hundreds, you want thousands, what, what would you consider a successful endeavor? No, I, I don't think we have such grand ambitions. As I say, we're, we're primarily audience measurement and advertising, right. and, and, that, and that's going to be our focus, but I think this is an opportunity for, for other organizations to take it and run with it. So paint a picture if you could, I, know you can't, I, I don't know how deep you can go, but it really help us understand the internal environment at Quantcast. Um, to the extent you can. You talked about the infrastructure, servers are expensive, storage is expensive. 
Paint a picture of us. What's it look? What's it look like under the covers? To the extent that you can share with us. Well, it's pretty big. We get about we get over 50 terabytes of data in the door per day. We process on the average day over 20 petabytes, and doing it on uh, about a thousand machines, reasonably modest hardware. So. So all the components of our system get a fair amount of exercise. We hit, hammer on them pretty hard. So when you say modest hardware, I mean, would you consider yourselves a sort of a hyperscale class, or um, are well, you sort of buying from ODMs, um, or do you buy you know traditional you know three-letter server vendor or two-letter server vendor hardware? Well, well, we're buying we buy commodity hardware. We you know we we spec it out ourselves. We've always been really cost conscious. You know, back when we got started, we were a, a small self funded startup with a with decent sized data and a very modest budget. And our modest our budget has grown a little since then, which is a good thing. But we're still very cost conscious and really, really conscious of how much how much we're paying for hardware and for and how efficiently the software is. So what does that mean? Like I'm not even sure what commodity hardware is anymore. Is that is Dell commodity hardware or is you know Quanta commodity hardware? Or? Well sure, more or less. I, I mean as opposed to like an appliance, if you if you go uh, to okay. go if you want to buy a rack of Natiza, for example, it's going to set you back a million dollars. And if you want the equivalent of a, a rack's worth of hardware at Amazon, that'll cost you a million dollars per year. And it adds up really fast. Okay, if, so Amazon's the more expensive in that equation, folks, <laughs> as we've been saying. <laughs> if, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're buying off the rack, so to speak, um, a rack's worth of hardware will cost more like $200,000. And, and tens of thousands of dollars per year to operate. Okay, so it's not exadata, it's not, okay, it's not right. the purpose-built appliance. Um, you talked about 2x the efficiency of, of, for instance, HDFS. Can you talk a little bit more about the tech behind that and yeah, how you achieve that? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the number one challenge in designing a distributed file system is, is fault tolerance. When you've got 100 machines or 1,000 machines, you can't expect them all to be up and running at any given time. So you're your software needs to be able to tolerate bits of your data going missing. And the, the way HDFS does that is it makes three copies yep. of all the data, mm -hmm. which works fine, but it's expensive. It means you need three times the disk space and three times the servers and three times the power and three times the cooling. And Tried so and true brute force approach. Yes. Yeah, but, but not the most efficient. No, no. So QFS uses Reed Solomon encoding, which or erasure coding, which yeah. has been around for decades. It's in CDs. CDs, DVDs. They used it in the transmission protocol for the Mars rover, and among other things. So it's heavy math. It's heavy math. It's got a and and a long lineage, but it hasn't seen a ton of use in distributed file systems. But we put it in we put it in QFS because it's got a big space savings. It, whereas HDFS takes triple takes triple the storage. QFS takes only one and a half times. So okay. relative to HDFS, it saves half your disk space. Okay, so you're creating slices and distributing data and then you can lose X number and then recreate them. Right, you're creating data slices and parity slices and, and by default we use six data slices and three parity slices and then we write those to nine separate places and if we can read any six, if any six remain readable, then we can reconstruct the original data. And that's, that's good, that means, that's actually a little better fault tolerance than you get from HDFS. You know, if you're making three copies of your data, you can afford to lose two, but you better not lose three. We can afford to lose three. Do you encrypt the slices? No, we don't encrypt the slices. Do you see that as a, as a, as a need that the open source community might pick up, for example? Um, is that sort of on the, on the to-do list or not necessarily a high priority? Well, I, I think the security features that are probably higher on the to-do list are, are more things around authentication, not necessarily encrypting the data per se. Mm -hmm. uh, although there are plenty of other layers where it makes sense, it makes sense that you might want to encrypt the data. Right, okay, so, so uh, we talked about the to-do list. Where would you like to see, uh, where do you encourage the community to pick up you know, sort of the innovation and, and where are you guys spending your time with the well, roadmap? Well, it's a, it's a good question and I think the, the, the for Hadoop, Hadoop serves you know, a very broad set of customers with a very broad set of use cases. And we've had a, a pretty specific one around the scale we're operating at and our 
and desire for cost efficiency. And I think the opportunity is for other people who have other sorts of use cases that don't line up very well with ours to go and build them themselves. I, I know other organizations care more about federation or they care more about high availability and those haven't been high priorities for us, but they may be higher for them. And so we're trying to give them the tools to build them if they want. So since you've announced um, the give back to the open source community, wh wh what kind of uptake have you seen? Are, are people actually experimenting with it, deploying it? Um, yeah, we're seeing a fair amount of ex experimentation and we're seeing a little deployment. I think the challenge with an open source project is, you know, unlike licensed software where someone's paying you, you don't you put it out there and you don't necessarily know who's running it. And, and uh, you know, this thing is, it works pretty well, so people don't have to come back to us for a lot of help. I think they're, they're kind of self-sufficient with it. But yeah, we do know of other places that are using it and, and they're happy with it, and that's great news. Excellent. All right, Jim, well listen, we really appreciate you coming by and sharing the Quantcast story, and, and congratulations on, uh, on the give back to the community, <laughs> and, uh, and, My and good to see you. Nice to meet good you. Good talking to you, Dave. Okay, well, I didn't get a word in edgewise, Dave. Thanks <laughs> Sorry, John. for a great interview. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> uh, <laughs> love, love Quantcast, you guys doing real-time data. Thanks for having me on theCUBE. We'll be right Thank back with our next segment. This is theCUBE at Strata Conference. Winding down day two, getting, to do a wrap, getting ready to do a wrap up here. Wall-to-wall uh, -wall covers three days of uh, in-depth coverage. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.